Most of us will never fully understand the meaning of life, and it is possible that there isn't one. Some people suggest that the meaning of life is to reproduce and to effectively carry on your species. You could argue that there's a lot more to life in the human world, but in the animal world this seems to be the general rule. Lots of animals will risk their lives just to get a chance to mate, and others will waste time, energy and resources just to get attention. Mating is so important in the animal world that some animals know how to attract a mate on instinct alone. Without being taught or shown what to do, some animals instinctively know how to attract a mate and know how to perform complicated mating rituals. This is why in the animal world it seems like mating is the true meaning of life, but some animals take this rule quite literally. After mating, some animals seem to give up on life, and they soon pass away after they've had the chance to reproduce. This seems to be a sudden yet very peaceful way to go, and a surprising number of animals die in this way. In this video I will be going through just a few of them, as I will be taking a look at three animals that die after mating. And for our first story we will be heading to all oceans around the world, as I will be taking a look at the octopuses. Octopuses are soft-bodied, eight-limbed mollusks, and today there are around 300 species. Over the hundreds of millions of years that the octopuses have been around, they have adapted to almost all marine ecosystems, and each species seems to specialise on a certain prey animal and a certain habitat. One of the stranger, more specialised species is the coconut octopus, and this octopus is known for being quite a hoarder. It's often found near tree-lined beaches of the Pacific coast, and in these areas it's known to collect coconut shells. Octopuses are known for being very intelligent, and they will often use things that they find in their environment to help them survive. The coconut shells offer them protection from predators, and it also acts as an almost perfect camouflage. Tool usage is very rarely seen in the marine world, and this is just one of the many reasons why octopuses really stand out. The giant Pacific octopus is the largest species of octopus in the world, and they can weigh almost 70 kilograms. These giants spend most of their day feeding on crustaceans and fish, and like most octopuses, they are known for their colour changing ability. Rapid colour changes can help to confuse potential predators, and they can also be used to blend in with their environment. Although the giant Pacific octopus is known for being very good at this, there is another species that's far more talented. One of the most entertaining animals to watch in the wild is the mimic octopus, as they simply have so many behaviours and abilities that at first seem impossible. They not only colour change regularly to hide themselves, but they also use this ability to impersonate other animals and to impersonate plants. They are known to mimic at least 15 other species, and they're even known to mimic their prey so that they can sneak up on them. As well as being very fascinating creatures, octopuses can also be very dangerous, and this is especially the case with the blue ringed octopus. This species has a very beautiful and striking coloration, and this flashing coloration should act as a warning. The blue ringed octopus's coloration is a form of aposomatic coloration, which in the animal world translates to leave me alone as I'm very poisonous or very venomous. If you listen to this octopus's warning then you will be just fine, but if you are bitten by this species it can prove fatal. Almost every part of an octopus's life is very strange and confusing to us, so it makes sense that the way they reproduce is also quite strange. Now as there are so many species, not all of them reproduce in the same way, and not all of them die in the same way either. When it comes time to mate, at first the female will play hard to get, but eventually she will accept the male. The male will then hand over a sperm sac, which the female will then later use to fertilise her eggs. They will often mate multiple times over a week or so, but eventually the female will feel ready to lay her eggs, and this is when she will start fighting off other males. When the female eventually lays her clutch of eggs, her job is done, and at this point her life is essentially over. The female octopus will stop eating and caring for herself, and eventually she will waste away. Usually by the time that the eggs hatch, she is already dead, but at least there are some more octopuses to remember her by. So even though it seems brutal, it's romantic in a way, and this is very fitting behaviour for such a strange group of animals. For our next species, we will be heading to the freshwaters of New Zealand, as we have the New Zealand longfin eel. Now this species is a freshwater eel that's endemic to New Zealand, and it really is a giant. It's one of the largest freshwater eels in the world, and females can grow to a length of over one and a half metres. It usually takes a longfin eel a very long time to get to this size, and some individuals can live up to 80 years old. In the wild they can be found in almost all freshwater habitats, and just like many other eel species they're known to do very well out of water. They can often be seen moving on land or climbing up waterfalls, and this gives them access to new water sources and new sources of prey. 
The New Zealand long thin eel's diet depends on how big it is, as younger individuals will generally feed on insect larvae, worms and snails, whereas the larger individuals will feed on fish, and sometimes even small mammals and waterfowl. Even though these eels are very large, they're not the fastest of creatures, and they rely on the element of surprise to catch their prey. They are mostly nocturnal and choose to sneak up on their prey under the cover of darkness. Even though these eels are still relatively common in some areas, they are currently listed as endangered. They are facing quite a few threats in the form of invasive species and overfishing, but luckily today they are protected. Although there are many interesting things about this eel's life, arguably one of the most interesting things about them is how they reproduce. When these giant eels get to the end of their lives, they eventually leave fresh water and they head out to the Pacific. They travel thousands of kilometers from New Zealand to their spawning grounds near Tonga, and when they get there, they mate and then quickly die. The eggs float to the surface and eventually hatch, and their leaf like larvae make it all the way back to New Zealand. Eventually they will transform and venture into fresh water, and then when they grow old they will start the process all over again. This is really quite a strange and complicated way to reproduce, but it does seem to work for the New Zealand's long thin eel. But for our next species we can head to both the rivers and the oceans, as we will be taking a look at the salmon. Of course there are plenty of salmon species around the world, and they are one of the more well known groups of fish. They are one of the most popular food fishes in the world, and this popularity has led to a massive decline in their numbers. This decline in their numbers is not only bad for the salmon, but it's also bad for the overall ecosystem. So many predators rely on salmon as a source of food, and a world with less salmon means a world with less predators. Creatures as large as bears and orcas rely on these fish, and without them they need to find food elsewhere, and it negatively affects their well-being. This is one of the many reasons why salmon are known as a keystone species, as they're simply such an important species to their ecosystems. Once again, not all species of salmon breed in the same way, and not all of them die after breeding, but they are possibly the most famous example of an animal that dies after mating, and once again they have quite a strange life cycle. It seems to be almost a reverse of the New Zealand long thin eels life cycle, as they start off in rivers then make their way out to sea, and then eventually they will return to mate. When they return to water, some species dramatically change, and they start to grow elongated jaws, and some species undergo an extreme colour change. Most salmon tend to breed over rocky gravelly riverbeds, and after they mate, they soon start wasting away. The fish that are left behind look and act like zombies, and eventually the life leaves their eyes. At this point they become easy pickings for scavengers, and this once again benefits the ecosystem. So even though not all salmon perish in this way, it is a very interesting story, and just goes to show how important it is to have salmon around. If you know of any other animals that could have made it on this list, then let me know down in the comments below. But thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed. If you liked it, please leave a like, and subscribe if you want to see more videos like these. But until next time, goodbye.